data encoded as XML can be a contentious issue for an application developer. The reason being is that XML has a reputation of spreading through an application like weeds. And if you are not careful in your use of XML, you will likewise have par XML parsing code everywhere. And it's like, where does the application begin and where does the parsing end? And how do I make sense of the code that I'm looking at? Which part is XML and which part is application logic? And people who've worked many years in database development, traditional database development using relational databases, have the same issue. So over time, a separation was developed where your data processing in, in terms of databases was kept in one module and your application logic and was kept in another uh, module and your what they call business data was kept in yet another module. Well, that approach applies, is equally valid in this context. This is the XML file. Um, it's actually a cleaned up version of the XML file. I used a tool called XML Lint with the dash dash format uh, parameter, the uh, format parameter. It'll reformat, re-indent an XML file. And in this case, I did that so I could make the file more readable. I should note that even though I reformatted this file for the purposes of studying it, um, actual testing will be done against the, the real the way the file actually comes out. So here we see the tag structure of this uh, data file. Um, it's using the RSS um, standard and each article you could say is denoted by a item tag. So each group of articles, each article is in an item tag. The actual headline is in a title tag and the web address is in a link tag and then you have this description that gives you a overall summary about the article you could call that an abstract and then you have a content tag that shows you um, or encoded tag that shows you all the shows you a, a good representation of the article um, some RSS news feeders uh, news readers will use this information and present it in its uh, raw form or present it in its um, translated form. It's HTML markup. And so um, this is a good opportunity to paste in this XML, sorry, this HTML markup into an HTML, ad hoc HTML file that I'm writing. And let's open it in Firefox and see what it looks like unencoded. Now, while it looks fabulous here from a readability standpoint, I'm still on the fence and I still haven't thought all the way through the security implications of parsing this, this uh, HTML all the way through. So, the current version of the application only pulls the raw the plain text abstract and shows it. It does not show or attempt to show the HTML content. However, I will be showing the HTML content in a later segment and so we'll see the results of that. And uh, But suffice it to say the main concern here is properly parsing the XML file in the first place. And the objective is to um, identify each item, each item grouping, and then within each item grouping, sift out the individual parts such as title, link, description, publication date, and then translate those 
bits of information into the RSS article data structure. The RSS article data structure, there will be instances of those as list entries in a C++ vector type. So we will have a C++ vector that will um, accumulate these RSS article instances and each instance will have the specific data for a specific headline. The parsing of the XML will seem daunting to someone who's never done it before. But the reality is, is that the steps for parsing it are well documented. The maintainers of the GNOME XML project and associated website has pretty decent documentation about the XML C library. All one has to do is go to that website or in my case download a copy of the documentation. Most of these open source projects actually make the documentation available as a, a separate download. I prefer PDF myself but HTML uh, archive is just can be just as good uh, as PDF though it's hard to take a HTML archive and put that on a phone or a tablet right uh, PDFs are much easier to uh, port in that case but that being said um, based on the um, the documentation they provided parsing it is pretty straightforward and so here we have the RSS article I referred to earlier and this is some pseudocode that will help to think about how we're going to go about utilizing it so we're going to have uh, one or more instances of the RSS article in this case let's say I have seven articles in a um, XML file and I'm going to loop through each one of them and I'm going to read the uh, feed name, the headline, the article date, article text, the URL and um, I'm going to present that information on the screen. And so you know you can use your source code files as kind of a digital whiteboard where you write code comments in line right there in the in the file itself and it can help with clarifying your ideas without necessarily um, having to hunt around for paper or you know disrupt your train of thought you're there looking at the code so here we're implementing the, the functions for the interface that has been defined for the XML parser, the RSS um, feed data parser, whose underlying format is XML. The user interface that we are putting together, it does not care about XML, it does not care about websites, uh, network protocols, it does not care about any of that. It just wants to grab some data in the format that it understands and visualize that on the screen. And so this interface is going to take care of the details of XML for the rest of the application and give to the application data in the format it can more productively use. There are some features, there are some aspects to this that is um, particularly important and that is we want to not only 
parse this XML data, but we want the ability to immediately save it to a actual file so when we're debugging it and inspecting the XML file, maybe it's a new RSS feed and we're having problems parsing it and we need to see what's going on with the data, then we want a function that will be able to take that data that we have pulled over the network and save it to a file. And so that's what the save feed to data file will do for us. Likewise, once we have finished inspecting that file, we need the ability to read that file back out of the file system and read it right into this parser that we've set up. And so that's why we have this function, get feed data from file. Both of those functions will use C API uh, libc in this case, uh, C API functions for file I.O. And they work, despite how simple they are, they appear, they work remarkably well. They're it's extremely fast. Um, there's no optimizations needed. It works. It works really well. So you would think reading one carrot at a time would be slow and maybe if you're dealing with gigabytes of data and a but in this case these files are um, less than a megabyte and this mechanism this approach is calibrated to the reality of the data that's actually being processed and it's a good point to make in that um, don't overdo it until the case exists for overdoing it and um, doing it the simple way this way saves a tremendous amount of time and it makes the code extremely clear. So to parse the XML file we need a few headers um, and we need the lib XML headers for various structures. GTK puts everything under a single header. In reality it doesn't but to use GTK productively, you only need to reference GTK slash GTK dot H. LibXML is more granular and it makes sense in this case because there are vast portions of GNOME XML that um, you probably don't want compiled into your application. If you're only using a very small subset of it. In our case, we're using a very small subset of it. In fact, it'll be so small, it'll be like, you know, why did we ever think that you needed all this code for processing XML? But the maintainers of uh, libxml did a great job in condensing and streamlining code so that it is easier for you to process uh, XML. And so on that note I'm going to take the code from the libxml website. I'm going to uh, use it verbatim and then make some small changes to it because like with libcurl and like with the preamble code for GTK I saw no reason to um, diverge from what they implied as the best approach in terms of getting started with those projects. And that goes to the maturity that we're seeing in the open source projects and how they have matured in both the quality of the code but also in the information that they put out there, though there's still substantial improvements to be made on that front. So we have the right headers in place and it makes sense here um, given the distinctions between the XML parsing and the direct uh, I.O. that exists in those other two functions um, get feed data from file and send feed data to file 
uh, to mark the XML oriented functions in a way that distinguishes them from the, the straight plain text I.O. oriented functions. As I mentioned before, there are code examples on the libxml website and when you open those examples it provides you with the code that you can use to um, get started and in my case um, I didn't have to go too much further than the code examples to achieve my objectives with respect to parsing the XML data. Admittedly, I've used uh, dozens of XML APIs uh, over the years, and so, um, so, and I'm, I, I at one time I would say today, but at one time I was uh, deeply read in XML standards, XPath, XPointer, XSL. Um, all of that good stuff. And I've used SACS-based parsers and DOM-based parsers, but my goal here was to not revisit all of the code that we used to write, but to see if maybe there is a simpler way to write code now. Here is the um, structure definition for XML attribute, which I will be using here that I have not used previously in earlier iterations of the program that used um, this API. And so using this will help when it comes to other feeds that use RS that format their data differently, still in RSS format, but different enough that um, basing your parsing off of one feed does not correlate to um, how other feeds are structured. And so here I've taken the example code and then I am modifying it. Um, starting off on line 53, I'm taking the feed data that's passed in um, to the function as, def as uh, defined on line 41. And I'm going to parse that data in memory. So um, rather than go with the example approach where you're parsing it from a file, this application never uses a file for parsing. The data is always in memory um, by the time this module receives it. And so um, that's on purpose. I don't want library code knowing about file paths or, or, or files um, as much as possible. And sometimes that is unavoidable. Um, in the case of SQLite, I am passing a file name around, but that's well defined enough that you know that that works. But when it comes to this feed data, it begins life as a data stream, and it is convenient to keep it that way as much as possible. So now that the um, beginning parts of the parsing has been defined, it's a good point to um, note that in our revision tracking system. And though there will be additional changes to this parser as we go along, the changes will be minor in comparison to where we are now. And in this case, it makes sense to make a more extensive uh, Git repository entry. And most Git repository entries, in my opinion, should um, resemble the one that you see here. Because it's good to have as much context as possible when understanding and maintaining code. <laughs>